if it's something weird and it don't look good, who you going to call? R.R.G. <laughs> and there's definitely something weird going on between Khalees and Bill Murray. Sources report the 43-year-old entertainer and the 72-year-old veteran actor are bumping uglies. Whenever there's some tomfoolery going on in these celebrity streets, you know we're going to dig deep into all their little business to bring y'all the tea. And after doing our research on Bill, well, Khalees might want to think twice about entertaining this hot, stinking mess. Before we get into today's video, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, green apple licorice, and three-wheel motion popcorn. William Murray was born on September 20th, 1951, as one of nine children. Bill was a pre-med student when he was busted with $20,000 worth of weed in his luggage at a Chicago airport. Child, Bill Murray was out there pushing weight. He received a slap on the wrist in the form of five years probation. According to Esquire magazine, before his criminal charge could get him kicked out of college, he decided to drop out. In 1974, his friend John Belushi got him a job as a regular on the National Lampoon Show. Three years later, Bill joined John as a cast member of Saturday Night Live. Bill was a hot, stankin' mess on set allegedly. When Chevy Chase returned to SNL to guest host in 1978, he and Bill reportedly got into a physical altercation that cast members describe as painful and awful. Thankfully, they were able to patch things up in later years. Seth Green was hired as a child star to appear in an SNL Christmas sketch. Seth told Good Mythical Morning YouTube channel that he was sitting on the arm of a sofa backstage when he asked Eddie Murphy if he could change the channel on the TV. Eddie gave him the okay right before Bill entered the room. According to Seth, Bill made a big fuss about Seth being in his seat, despite Seth sitting on the arm of the sofa. A brave Seth told Bill, Are you this much of a jerk? You're this rude to tell a child to get out of your seat? And that's when Bill allegedly picked Seth up by the ankles, held him upside down, and dangled him over a trash can while saying, The trash goes in the trash can. Seth started swinging his arms wildly and knocked Bill right in his chicken tenders. Upon impact, Bill reportedly dropped Seth into the trash can. Seth said, I was horrified. I ran away, hid under the table in my dressing room, and just cried and cried. Around this time, Bill had been dating talent coordinator Margaret Kelly off and on for about a decade. Early one morning, on the day before Super Bowl Sunday, which Bill considers a national holiday, he told her to get in the car so they could get some Mexican food. Margaret agreed, but as Bill kept driving and driving and driving, she grew more and more frustrated. She told Rolling Stone, I thought he was trying to drive me insane. He finally told her the truth. He was driving them to Las Vegas so they could get married on Super Bowl Sunday. Margaret wasn't completely down with the idea at first, but then she decided to just go along with it. They got married in Vegas on January 24, 1981 at 4.30 in the morning, and they went on to welcome two sons. He appeared in Meatballs, Stripes, Caddyshack, Little Shop of Horrors, and in 1984, Bill's role in Ghostbusters garnered him international attention. The film offers came rolling in, but he was able to be picky, and he only appeared in a handful of films in the upcoming years. It was around this time that the industry started talking about his peculiar behavior behavior on various film sets, including in 1990 when he starred in Quick Change with Gina Davis. In her memoir, which we've linked for you in the description box, Gina described her unpleasant interactions with the actor. According to Gina, Bill yelled at her on set in front of more than 300 people. She also said he made her uncomfortable during the promotional tour of the movie, which was evident during their joint appearance on the Arsenio Hall show. He touched you a lot in the audition? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I swear. I swear. The first, yeah. The first thing he did was, like, take my shirt out of my pants and start tickling my stomach. Perhaps the most shocking allegation is that Bill used a massage device on her. And get this, he actually confirmed this bit of information. It's called the thumper. The thumper. <laughs> There's, like, no way in hell I'm going to let him touch me with this thing. And, you know, cut to five minutes later, and I'm, like, laying on the couch, and he's like, 
On the set of the 1991 film What About Bob, Bill butted heads with the late producer Laura Ziskin. She told the Baltimore Sun Bill threatened to throw her across the parking lot before breaking her sunglasses on the pavement. Laura said Bill was just joking when it all went down, but she was still furious. Rumors also circulated that Bill threw an ashtray at his co-star Richard Dreyfuss. Richard went on to describe Bill as a drunken bully. Although Bill left SNL in 1980, he returned a few more times as a guest host, including in 1993. According to Rob Schneider, Bill absolutely hated the cast upon his return, and he had a particular distaste for cast members Adam Sandler and Chris Farley. Rob told the Jim Norton and Sam Roberts show, absolutely hated us. I mean, seething. It was just naked rage. Groundhog Day reportedly destroyed his friendship with his longtime collaborator, Harold Ramis, who passed away in 2014. Bill was experiencing marital issues at the time and was reportedly acting erratically. Harold called Bill irrationally mean. In 1995, Bill lost his mom, and a year later, he and Margaret decided to go their separate ways. Bill never addressed the true cause of their divorce. However, he later told Howard Stern, not to diminish a relationship with a woman, I can't take on another relationship if I'm not taking care of the things I really need to take care of the most. According to Radar Online, the marriage crumbled in the midst of adultery accusations. In other words, Bill was allegedly being a cheater-cheater pumpkin eater. And a year after his divorce was finalized, he married a woman named Jennifer Butler. Now, we ain't ones to gossip, but some sources claim Jennifer was his side piece when he was married to Margaret. He and Jennifer had four children together, making Bill a father of six. Bill is one of a few Hollywood stars who doesn't have a publicist, and in 2000, he fired his agent. He told the Times, I said I didn't ever want to speak to them again, and I never did. His landline phone would still ring off the hook from industry execs. So one day, he unplugged the phone and created a 1-800 number for filmmakers to contact him. Harold Ramis once said, Bill would give you his kidney if you needed it, but he wouldn't necessarily return your phone calls. Bill rarely answers the line and reportedly checks the mailbox whenever he feels like it. He told IndieWire, Sometimes I go days or weeks. Sorry, I'm busy living. Since the number is unlisted, people can only get the digits through word of mouth. Some entertainers have revealed that they can only get in contact with Bill through his lawyers. And back in the day, directors were told to leave scripts in random phone booths near his home outside New York, and Bill would pick up the script at his convenience. While on the set of the 2000 film Charlie's Angels, Lucy Liu accused Bill of hurling inexcusable and unacceptable comments at her. According to the Times, he allegedly told her she didn't know how to act, and Lucy reportedly responded by throwing punches at him. Bill confirmed to the publication that something went down by saying, Look, I will dismiss you completely if you are unprofessional and working with me. Charlie's Angels director Joseph McGinty Nickel, who goes by the name McG, told The Guardian he had his own issues with Bill on set. According to McG, Bill headbutted him. What the hell? Bill later denied the allegations. He was also accused of touching Solange's hair and asking her if it was a wig during her guest appearance on SNL. And get this, it all went down right after Solange performed her song, don't touch my hair. Mm, mm, mm. His second wife, Jennifer, filed for divorce in 2008. In court documents, she accused him of adultery, addiction to marijuana, sexual addictions, and frequent abandonment. The filing also alleged that Bill put his hands on her on more than one occasion. And after allegedly hitting her in the face, he told her she was lucky he didn't end her life. Jennifer also requested a restraining order. A month later, she was granted custody of their four children and was awarded two of their homes. Bill was ordered to pay child support and was awarded three other residences across the U.S. He was also ordered to pay her a $7 million divorce settlement per the terms of their prenup. Their divorce was finalized in June 2008, and Jennifer passed away in January 2021 at the age of 57. The cause of her death was not revealed. Following his second divorce, Bill rolled solo dolo to most red carpet events and was rarely linked to any romantic partners. 
During a 2014 appearance on The Howard Stern Show, Bill said it would be nice to go to some events with a date, but he was doing just fine focusing on himself and his six children. In 2022, it was reported that he was a bit too touchy with women on the set of the film Being Mortal. Eventually, they had to shut the entire set down while they investigated the situation. A source told Page Six Bill loved women and was always flirting. The source added, He was very hands-on touchy, not in any personal areas, but put an arm around a woman, touched her hair, pulled her ponytail, but always in a comedic way. Welp, the truth was slowly revealed. Bill had actually straddled and kissed a female production staffer without her consent. The woman said she was unable to free herself during the ordeal because she was pinned underneath his weight. In the end, Bill and the woman reached a settlement in October 2022. Along with paying the woman $100,000, she also signed a non-disclosure that prevents her from talking about the incident moving forward. Meanwhile, Khalees moved on from Nas after their divorce was finalized in April 2009. She married Mike Mora in 2014, but sadly, Mike lost his battle with stomach cancer in March 2022. The mother of three told People magazine that his diagnosis and untimely passing taught her so much about life. She said, It reminds you how short time is and how we don't have any control. I want to control what I can control, how I treat the people around me. That brings us to June 2023. The U.S. Sun reported Khalees and Bill Murray were spotted spending a lot of time together in the U.S. and abroad. He was also seen at some of her performances in London and posed for a picture with her backstage. According to TMZ, they were even seen together at the same London hotel. Sounds like someone is getting their back blown out. While TMZ reports the couple bonded over the grief of losing their loved ones, a source told the U.S. Sun, Whatever it is that has brought them together and however unlikely it seems, they are both single and are having fun despite the fairly big age gap. With her fans begging to know WTF was going on between them, Khalees finally addressed the rumors in a June 13, 2023 Instagram comment. In her response, Khalees said people are dumb to believe everything they hear. Then she added, but the best part is we are both blessed, rich, and happy. Mmm, okay. Police and Bill being an item is something we never expected. But hey, love sometimes blossoms in the most unexpected ways. Despite Bill being a walking, talking red flag, we wish them both nothing but the best. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.